Ride restraints are designed to keep you secure no matter what. Though they all serve the same purpose, they come in many different designs. Today we'll explain the basics of how the different types of ride restraints work. Restraints come in many different shapes and sizes. They may be as simple as a grab bar or seat belt which need no explanation, or as complex as a redundant hydraulic over-the-shoulder harness, which we'll describe more in a moment. Exactly what type of restraint a ride is equipped with depends on many factors. There are standards in place by ASTM to determine what type of ride restraints must be used on each ride based on factors such as the expected forces riders will experience. This is examined further in this video on your screen now if you'd like to learn more. Today we'll be breaking down the specifics of how these restraints actually work. Starting with the oldest and most simple restraint type, the latching restraint. These restraints can only be set in two positions, opened and closed. They use a spring-loaded bar under the train or ride unit to latch the restraining device, usually a lap bar, in place. To change from open to close, these restraints usually use a foot pedal that an operator must physically press. Due to this restraint system's design, it has no preference between being opened or closed, meaning that these restraints can come open during a ride cycle relatively easily when compared to the others we'll talk about in a moment. Due to this design, these restraints are generally not used very frequently anymore and remain on only very tame and old rides. Rides with this restraint type do have some mechanisms in place to ensure that restraints are in the proper position though. One of these is a pedal check sensor. As restraint release pedals will be in a different height when restraints are closed versus being open, a sensor may be added to a ride with these restraints that magnetically detects when a pedal is in the closed position. If this sensor does not detect a pedal in the correct position, it will stop the dispatching train. The next type of restraint was designed to replace the single position latching restraint, the multi-position ratcheting restraint. This design works off the simple principle of a ratchet, a mechanical device that can move freely in one direction but is unable to move in the opposite direction. The simplest of these designs use a toothed rod with locking pins, usually at least two for redundancy. These pins slide into the rod, preventing it from moving down, but allowing it to move up. This in turn allows the rider to lower their restraint at any time, but it does not allow the restraint to become open until an outside entity interacts with the system. The locking pins are spring-loaded into position, requiring force to remove them from the locked position. In this way, the ratchet design defaults to the locked position, making it considerably safer than the latching restraint. More advanced version of this design, such as those found on B&M roller coasters, use a drum-like ratchet with several hammer pins. This restraint design does suffer from one flaw that has resulted in them slowly fading away, and that is that they're only able to lock in a predetermined number of positions. On B&M rides, for example, they have eight different settings. If a rider does not fit one of these settings perfectly, they will have some play in their restraint. This causes some riders to be concerned. However, this is how the restraints are designed. These types of restraints can also experience a problem known as a slipped ratchet. A slipped ratchet occurs when the locking pins of the restraint don't fully engage due to being right at the point of engagement. Then, usually after the ride is started, the rider will put some force on their restraint that causes the device to pop up into the next highest setting making it feel like the restraint has temporarily released. This is more common when the ratchet device gets worn or when there is debris in the device. This can be scary and on some rides where the highest ratchet position is an allowed position for the restraint to be in, it can result in the restraint releasing entirely, though it will lock again if pushed down. This was the case for the highly publicized incident on the Desert Storm roller coaster at Castles and Coasters. In this case, a lap bar secured by a ratchet system slipped from the top ratchet, which allowed the restraint to be completely open. In this case, the rider chose to leave the moving train rather than to pull the lap bar back down where it could have been re-secured. Ratcheting style restraints are unlocked by physical force. On most rides, this takes the form of a bar that raises and lowers in the station area, pushing against an assembly that pulls back the locking pins against the force of the spring. When this bar is removed, the restraints default back to locked. These types of restraints can only be unlocked this way in the station area. If restraints need to be unlocked outside of the station, this can only be accomplished by constantly applying pressure with a device such as a pedal attached to part of the ride unit or a specialized tool. If pressure stops being applied, the restraints will default back to being locked. 
The final type of restraints are hydraulic restraints. This design works by having a hydraulic solenoid that uses hydraulic pressure to remain in the same position. This is generally accomplished through a closed loop system that typically, but not always, includes a check valve, which allows fluid to flow in one direction but not the other, allowing restraints to lower but not raise during the ride. Some versions do not feature check valves and thus remain in the same position for the entire ride. These restraints can be unlocked with an electrical signal. On most rides, this electrical signal is sent by a contactor that raises under the ride unit and sends an electrical signal to unlock the restraints. This then opens a valve in the solenoid allowing the restraints to move. Hydraulic restraints often feel heavy as when you move them, you're moving the hydraulic fluid through the system. They also make no noise. These restraints may be set up with multiple solenoids in order to have redundancy, or they may use multiple to reduce the wear and tear on individual solenoids. The only way for this type of restraint to be unlocked outside of the station area is with an electrical signal in most cases. This means that if the hydraulic restraints need to be unlocked outside of the station area, a battery pack is often used and hooked up directly to them. In other cases, a screw may be accessible that can manually release the pressure in the system. These types of restraints often feature seat sensors. This is a system that communicates with the ride's control system the secured status of each individual restraint. These are found on other restraint types too, but are most common on hydraulic systems as there's already electricity being supplied to the train. Seat sensors consist of a magnetic proximity sensor mounted to a part of each individual restraint. When the restraint is lowered to an allowed position, the sensor will send a signal to the ride's control system, telling it that the individual seat is safe and ready for dispatch. This is intended as an extra layer of safety on top of systems already in place. On new, high-thrill rides, it's actually required to be a part of their design in areas that abide by ASTM standards. All of these restraint systems can be connected to any number of different restraint devices, such as lap bars or shoulder harnesses. These vary from ride to ride and manufacturer to manufacturer. That being said, almost all rides use one of the restraint systems we have discussed. To learn more about how each restraint system is chosen, watch my video on how restraints are designed. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.